Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So we've talked about crowning barrels before on my channel a little bit. And um, of course, because I don't have a lathe anymore at this point in the time, which I'm hoping I can get one would be soon, would be nice. Um, I can do awesome crowning jobs with a lathe because you, you have the right tooling, you can do it, right? And there are kits that you can buy uh, now where you can... Uh, go by the caliber that you'd need or buy the whole slewing kit and this can cost you like literally hundreds of dollars um, But at least you don't need a lathe, right? And if you're only after specific calibers for the guns that you have uh, Where you need to you know recrown them or touch up the crowning kind of deal um, They're real handy kits and they do just as good of a job as a lathe would now <coughs> I've been using um, a grinding stone technique which I did use on a lathe and I've used other techniques on a lathe as well of course the non grinding stone works actually really awesome if you have a lathe um, and I've done freehand with a grinding stone and did a really good job um, however I saw a video looking for a better cheaper way than also using grinding stones and I come across a video about using brass screws and I thought we'd give that a try today. And, uh, because, you know, you see one thing on a video, but, you know, how much is there, you know, in that that is really accurate uh, for information? Now, of course, given that there are uh, a few videos on this, I'd probably say it's pretty pretty good that it's going to work. But you got to have the right size screw head, too, which is another big thing. And you do need one that has um, either a flat head or a combination flat and square. Uh, we're using a straight flat head. Now I picked up a pack of five of these at Home Hardware for a buck ninety-nine, um, and these seem to be um, good for one seven seven. At least that was my best guess for that size, because uh, the next size down was definitely way too small. And I also picked up a couple boxes for doing twenty-two caliber, and I've already done a twenty-two caliber uh, barrel. And uh, I'll tell you the results of that at the end of the video. Uh, but I did find that the better size is an 832 for a 22 caliber air rifle. Now, this is for you air gunners out there that like to do modding like me, chopping down barrels, custom lengths. You gotta recrown, right? And you want to have as best a crown as possible um, because you're likely not going to have a lathe, right? And right now, like I said, I don't, so I need a better solution. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Now you, you're supposed to have a polishing compound of some sort. Um, eh, something that's a little gritty. Now because our barrel is a scrap barrel, we're not going to go through all the little procedures of jamming a Q-tip down there uh, kind of deal. Uh, but you'd want to jam a Q-tip or something in the hole if you're leaving the barrel in the gun. If you're taking it out, then don't worry about it. Just spray it out with automotive brake cleaner after you're finished and that'll take all the debris out. Now on CO2 guns, real easy. Um, brake barrel air rifles, definitely not a problem. Remove the barrel. But side cockers, this is where you got your problem with springers and nitros and side cocker air rifles. Um, you, you can't take the barrel off as easily. It's a lot of hassle to do it. So I would be going uh, with uh, probably jamming the Q-tip down it um, at the same time. Load a pellet in the breech after so that the pellet can not only shoot the Q-tip out, but also so you don't end up doing what's called the dry fire to your gun because that can actually wreck the piston. So I'm going to use some oil as a lubricant. I just sprayed a bit of oil on the top. I'm going to show you how this is done from what I've seen and we'll see what kind of results we get. So this pretty much guarantees according to all the videos that this will keep everything centered so it's it's screw up proof apparently now because we're going metal against metal you got friction which is the whole point behind this I'm guessing they go with a slotted screw over um, a regular square head so the slot can actually carve into the front you know now, if you're even just retouching up a crown, this technique is also said to work for that as well. And it doesn't take long to do it. You just do this motion, 
and uh, you know I, I did try the idea of just leaving it sit there and it didn't turn out quite as nice so there is something to be said about using the rotating motion as you're going and our battery just died in our drill and uh, you put the drill on forward mode by the way Now, if you're doing a CO2 pistol, uh, depending on the pistol, you're likely going to have to remove the barrel to do it. Um, actually, some air rifles may be a bit of a problem if you have uh, like an over shroud uh, on the end of your barrel for your springers. Uh, but you shouldn't have a problem if you have the right size screw uh, because you're not going to get those front sight shroud pieces off. Uh, without causing damage to them so you know not always a perfect solution but if you have the right screw you should be all right I, I've only ever seen this done on firearms I haven't seen it done on any kind of an air rifle even a over 500 feet per second air rifle in Canada yes it is a firearm but we're talking firearms that shoot bullets is where I've primarily seen this technique being used. And you don't have to put a lot of pressure either. In fact, you shouldn't because you don't want to destroy the screw either. So let's take a look at that and see what we got. Well, that's actually uh, that's actually making a difference. I think we're going to have to up the speed and maybe add a little bit of pressure. I freshly faced off the front of this barrel, by the way. So this may take a little bit longer on a fresh-faced barrel. Which also means we're going to probably have to add a little extra pressure, because we're not touching up a crown, we're creating a whole new crown. And you need a screw that's going to be, um, in this case, this size, so that it overlaps the sides of the muzzle, so that you don't end up pushing through into the barrel. So, and you need that outside edge created for the crown too, at the same time. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to take a look under the magnifying glass so we can see. The Q-tip here, clean out the hole. I think with an abrasive uh, compound of some sort, um, it would probably work a little quicker. That's actually doing a really nice job. That is a really nice crown on there. I would like that just a hair deeper though. So, let's spend another minute on this. And go down just a little bit deeper. Take a look at that. 
clean it out. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's actually really, really nice. That turns out pretty good. Alright, so see if I can give you guys a real good close up of this. So you can see it created a really nice crown in there. Now, generally, when you're using a professional crowning kit, especially the new manual ones that I've seen out, um, they have like carbide cutters, they do a perfect 11 degree crown, blah 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 blah. And of course, you get what you pay for, right? Um, in this case, you can achieve a really nice crown as well. Um, and for two dollars for a pack of five uh, screws, that's pretty good. I'm just showing you the edging here as best as I can so you get an idea what happened. So that's pretty impressive. So, how'd this turn out on a 22 cal? Really, really good. This technique, I definitely recommend it. Um, <coughs> if you are looking for an inexpensive and screw-up proof way of doing this thing, this definitely works. You know, you don't have to put out hundreds of dollars. You're going to get a really nice crown out of the, the deal. Um, as far as the wear and tear on the screw goes, even with adding a little bit of extra pressure, which I did, I have no damage to the screw. I can still do a few more crown jobs easily um, with this screw, so that's not a problem. So you're going to get more than one use out of the screw, which is also good. Um, so for 17 caliber or .177 cal uh, guns, uh, the screw size you need is a 632 by 1 inch. Um, you don't want longer than this really because you don't want the flex and you want to get the majority of that screw into your drill, okay? Um, for 22 caliber, we're looking at 832 uh, by inch and a quarter was the length I could get. I couldn't get anything really that much shorter, um, so I went with that. Uh, the, uh, so that's going to be your 22 caliber. Now this is for air rifles. I'm not sure about 832 for a firearm. Okay, more than likely for a firearm 22, because a firearm 22 caliber is actually bigger than an air rifle um, 22 cal. Now, when you start getting into FX liner barrels and stuff, um, that's going to be another ball game too, because those calibers in 22 cal are bigger than a standard 22 caliber air rifle that we generally shoot. So standard barrels, we'll say uh, we're talking like Crossman Quest, Phantoms, um, uh, uh, 2240s, 2289s, any of your 22 caliber for your 177s. You know, you're generally talking the new Crossman Phoenix, you're talking 1377s, well the 1322 for 22 caliber too. You get the idea. Standard, normal, everyday air guns, so not the exotic PCPs and stuff. Um, but if you're getting into those FX barrels and stuff where they're shooting uh, basically slugs through these things all the time, um, they're, they are a bit bigger caliber, so you may have to actually go up to like a 1032 uh, for those. But just buy yourself a variety pack of screws. Um, for the 177 cal, though, you're definitely uh, going to be 632 is going to be your only reasonable size, and that would be it. Um, these, um, like I said, the uh, the 832 for normal 22 caliber air rifles, you're probably going to have to go uh, 1032 or slightly larger for your FX barrels um, on those type of guns. But the technique works, and it does work really well. Even I can't do that good of a job freehand with a grinding stone and have it come out nice and even. Now, when you're 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 doing um, like barrel chopping, and this is a barrel chop recrown basically, so I faced it off. You have to make sure that when you face that barrel, that is also even, okay? Otherwise you will cut sideways. So you're going to have to have some kind of a very flat piece of metal, um, even a glass 
uh, piece of glass is actually really adequate too um, and on a level surface and put the barrel on, on the surface and make sure it can stand up on its own without any problem and that pretty much will tell you how flat your surface is um, because if it doesn't want to stand up then you're going to have to uh, go back to the drawing board and reface this and there's different ways to do that you can use files but you need something up on the edge that's going to keep that even so you're going to need a piece of hardened steel that you can clamp to the side now in those um, kits that I was talking about earlier where you can do this manually um, it's a pretty cool kit actually it actually comes with a piece of hardened steel plate so that you can face it from at least what I'm seeing anyways um, is what it, it, it came with I'm pretty sure it did anyways uh, it's probably the only video on YouTube on it so you might want to look that up check it out and and see um, but uh, they go through all the stuff and um, anyways I've been looking into that kit as well myself and I'm thinking ah, if I want absolute perfect stuff and I'm gonna do it for a living I would invest the money into that kind of a crown system so that you know if I'm gonna do a firearm for somebody um, you know I mean that's serious business when we're talking firearms also serious with air guns you know but with an air gun you know you can do it really really beautiful job um, with a firearm I would probably suggest and recommend buy the the, the actual pieces that you need because you can buy the kit as a full out kit to cover all your calibers or you can actually buy the kit um, as just the pieces you need and the guy does do uh, 0.177 right on up so you know that from what I understand anyways um, I'm looking further into it um, because when you have the professional tools you can actually justify charging somebody 30 or 40 dollars or whatever it is um, to do a, a, a recrown you know and being that I'm back into air guns too, uh, full out and repairing them again, uh, I want to give my customers to the absolute best quality work. Now this is really, really good. It's going to work really, really well. Um, you know, so that's not an issue uh, with me with air guns. This is perfect for air guns, in my opinion. Um, it would be really good for just touching up the crown, maybe on a firearm but I don't know about um, you know doing it from a scratch base like this for a brand spanking new crown I'm not sure how well that would work with a firearm I don't actually shoot regular firearms um, I'm an air gunner so you know to me anything in 22 and 177 even BB gun barrels you know to put a crown on them not that it would really help them a lot but it kind of might you know um, I would say that this would be your perfect solution, you know, and anybody can do it. That's the thing. You just saw how long it took me to put a really nice crown on this, you know, and uh, that that's pretty awesome. Uh, if you do have to uh, do any kind of refacing too and you're not quite sure, you can take a really hard block. Now, this is ebony and some 400 grit paper and you just hold it like this and just back and forth real small movements and that will also help level that surface out for you you know and you'll know when you're completely level if you look at the metal when it's when it's cut how it ended up on the sander when that's all nice and smooth right then uh, and you've gotten rid of all the lines then you're pretty much at that point you've got her nice and dead flat Okay, and like I said, I would still do the glass test um, or something with a very hard but very, very flat surface because you want the barrel to be able to stand up on its own without wobbling or falling over because then you know you're at a 90 degree. But you can also get, uh, there's tools too, like um, you could actually use a square, okay, for example. I'm going to show you this and then we're out of here, but I'm going to zoom out for this part so you can see a lot more. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take a square, make sure your, your thing is tight, and uh, uh, let's see, how can we do this? Oh, well, actually, we can mount the square in the vise. Now, if your square is actually a good square, 
and you've got everything leveled here. Okay, that looks like it's pretty good. So this square is probably not the best example. levels are a bit of a pain. So I do have a bit of rounding going on on this. So now that could also be the surface. I do have an Athena square here as well. This should offer us a much better surface. And again we want to get this level Actually, that turned out pretty good right there. So, I do have a bit of flattening to go on this. So, that means it's not perfect. Another way to verify that, if you can't get it going like that, is to hold the barrel up against the square and look for spots of daylight. And uh, that means holding it up into a light, actually. And then just rotate the barrel. And I can see right now, I do have a high spot on here, okay? That's going to tell me right there that even though this looks really good, we do have a high spot on the barrel. So that means we got to re-flatten this thing and start over again from scratch, obviously. But this video is about showing you how to do this, but also, you know, having the extra added info that, you know, showing this, that, you know, this didn't get buzzed on the sander perfectly flat. That is another big thing. You've got to make sure your sander is set up perfectly flat. Um, but it still doesn't mean it's going to be 100%. And that's where you need uh, to have a jig, uh, a V-shaped piece of metal that can go in there. Um, actually, one way you can do this. Machinist blocks that don't cost very much. And they are hardened steel, so you're not going to hurt them. So, a machinist block actually gets you perfectly squared and flat okay so you can feel there's a bit of a ridge here you want to try and have as minimal as possible right but you can also rotate the block around and see there here I can feel oh that's nice and flat there but this is raised up here so I already know that this is not square so you can clamp this to the barrel really easy um, you don't need a very huge clamp for this And we just do something like this. We find the high spot. And we get the high spot. And then we just clamp that there. And then we can take a nice fine file. You want a fine file. And you file that off until it is perfectly flat and even. And you check the rotation. Make sure that all your edges are flat. Once they are, then you know that you've got a definite 90 degree dead face on that. Then I would go ahead and start crowning. But like I said, this video is an example to show you this technique and that it does actually work and it works really well. Um, I did this um, yesterday on a 22 cal barrel and I know of course it was already dead flat. I made sure of that and it, the crown turned out beautiful. So I just got to sight that gun in now and you know because you change your crown, change your sight in. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.